Welcome everybody and welcome to members of the community that are here. Thank you for coming. We have a, uh, a time constraint tonight because there's been a request to have Chief Murad, Chief Morrison and Randall who's on his way right now to the Police Commission meeting at City Council by 8 o'clock. So what we're going to do is go through the agenda and finish the this portion of the meeting at 7.15, and then we need to go into executive session. So that's the plan. Uh, so let's get started. Um, any additions or modifications to the agenda, <coughs> anybody? Yeah, I sent over a note. I was wondering if we could hear from um, Winkleman again. Yeah, we could. That's yeah. during the public forum. That would be great. Okay. Anything else? Okay, so next is public forum. So, Mr. Winkleman, thank you. Um, I want to thank Mark for giving me the opportunity. Um, I was hoping this would be a conversation more than just me speaking. Uh, I have brought a, a timeline of my multiple complaints to the police department and what happened through those complaints. Um, I'm happy to explain them. I have a few copies I can hand out. I just had a thought, and, yeah. and I, and I, I, I um, in, in response to your request that it's a discussion, maybe we move to the chief's report and we can wait till Randall's here so that sure. he can be part of that discussion. Yeah. Is that okay? Good. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Can help you much because I was prepared to forego the chief's report in the interest of time. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. We can skip over. Well, then we'll skip over the chief's report. Right. Just, push it, just push it back on the agenda. Yeah, and let's um, obviously let's wait for the task force update till Randall comes. <laughs> sure. Is there anyone else from the public who wants to speak? Yeah. <clears throat> Go ahead. So. Thanks, chief. Hello, and hello to those of you I recognize and served on the. Um, Policing Policies Commission with. I just wanted to uh, put forth some comments on the process and also um, some hopes for moving forward. Uh, my name is Milo Grant and I do look at Board 3, just an FYI. Um, one of the main issues uh, that is of great concern to me is follow-up follow up on the suggestions that we were able to put forth. I personally don't believe they went far enough. Um, we had some members all the way over here, we had some members all the way over here, and then we were trying to get here, but I think we got more there, and there being the status quo. So I have a really big concern about the status quo uh, being maintained because I don't think that's an acceptable resolution. So I understand that there's only a certain amount of power that the police commission has, and I know that you're having discussions about oversight, how that might be able to be changed, et cetera, so there's more to come on that. I do understand that. But I think it's really important that follow-up really be assigned to someone for responsibility. So for example, um, going to Mr. Wiggleman's situation, there were complaints around social media actions of our former chief. These complaints were made publicly. They were also brought forth by another individual to this commission. And there were promises that were made, some made by the mayor. And we just had a social media policy that was a draft that was floating out there, apparently with no timeline, and there were some of us in the committee who were like, oh, well, they promised to do something about it, they must be doing something about it. Meanwhile, nothing's getting done, and look what we have, it blows up in our faces in a major way to where we've lost two uh, top people in the department's leadership. And that, to me, is indicative of turmoil that I feel has to be existing in the department, but it's something that people really don't wanna talk about. You don't wanna admit that out loud. But there has to be. There just has to be. So uh, the follow-up is going to be crucial in that it can't just be lip service. Like people have to talk about things that are happening. 
So one of the um, suggestions, which I think is really important, is listening sessions, like really engaging um, all the members of our community, like reaching out and engaging certain individuals who can help engage other individuals in the community that might not want to come to this meeting because this building is not considered a safe space, for example. Um, even when we moved some of our meetings to the library, it didn't increase public attendance because I think we didn't really do a good job of engaging the community. Um, I was watching my attention that some of the recordings that are available on the city's website, even though it's a good quality recording, you can't maneuver in it, the, not the same way you could if you were watching this video on Channel 17 or on YouTube, where you can go back or you can start listening and then come back and pick up where you left off. It, that, it doesn't allow you to do that. So it's, it's not for someone who's really trying to get an idea of what happened during the meetings um, beyond the minutes, because as we know, minutes very often <coughs> don't reflect the depth of conversation that happens. Uh, those recordings could be, they could be easier um, so that they're uh, more accessible to people. Someone who could try to listen to it and then realize that they can't go back or they can't jump ahead would, you know, they would feel discouraged about that. So I just want to mention that. Um, but the listening sessions are so crucial and I really think that they're going to be important. I think they're also going to be important to talk to all of the citizens, uh, as many citizens as possible, um, when we're talking about we're in a search for a new police chief. So I think those sessions have to start if we're determining what the citizens would like to see in a new police chief. And I realize that when you're looking for a new police chief, there's going to be a lot of factors, and I just hope the public isn't forgotten. There's going to be the needs of the department, and the department's going to have specific leadership needs that they're going to be looking for, but the public's going to be looking for things too. We want to get back the trust. We want to, to have people um, of all backgrounds being willing to cooperate with our police because they can't do their jobs if they don't have that cooperation. They can't do their jobs if they don't have that trust. One of the other things I was um, concerned about is there really needs to be a willingness and a desire to do better. So when we look at the day-to-day -day activities of our department, they do good work. And I didn't like the fact that because there was some criticism brought forth and some concern brought forth about these use of force incidents that have disturbed some of us, that that meant we didn't appreciate the day-to-day -day work that these officers do. Um, that bothered me a lot. I did not like the us versus them, that people were trying to push people into a category. Just because you offer up input or criticism, that does not mean you don't support the police officers. And I didn't like the fact, although I recognize, given the volume of interactions that occur, that these incidents are a very small number, that doesn't mean what happened isn't important and has to be deep dived. Like if we use a comparison of doctors at a hospital, if you have doctors doing good jobs every day, saving people, taking care of sick people, saving lives, but some of them have made mistakes and some of those names you see repeatedly and the hospital's being sued, which they probably are, they probably, who knows how many lawsuits they have to deal with on an ongoing basis, uh, but they have malpractice insurance, right? The police officers don't pay malpractice insurance, so it's, it's a very different thing, and we would expect that the hospital is looking into the mistakes to make sure that whatever can be done to prevent future mistakes is being done. Um, so I, Looking at that comparison, I found sometimes it was it was lacking. It was like, well, you know, this is only a small part of what happened, and then it, almost dismissing what happened and dismissing the concerns. Now that might not have been the um, the intention, but it kind of came over as the end result. It's like, okay, I'm here with my time. Is everyone in the same place? 
with regards to the urgency that we need to be bringing toward these issues. Um, and also bias. We barely scratch the surface of bias training. And I really think that that is something that needs to be looked at, especially in terms of are the police officers aware of the history of policing in this country, especially when it comes to marginalized individuals and people of color, and how that history has affected how certain groups feel towards police officers. And with that knowledge, they can be armed to create better relationships within the, within the city. So I have a lot more to say, but I think that covers the gist of it. Um, I appreciate the work that you do, and hopefully you can work with the city council to figure out some kind of um, procedure going forward, some process going forward for the follow-up, and maybe there needs to be a subcommittee to continue to the work, because the city council is like, we need something. We need something on use of force now. You've been going at this too long, which we really hadn't been. We started late, because we didn't get enough we didn't fill all the spots. Then we had a meeting where all we did was talk about data. This is what we want to see. And then we didn't have another meeting for three weeks. And then we got binders that were like this big. No exaggeration. Those of you on the committee know how big those binders were. And then we're meeting maybe twice a month. And in the months where the holidays, we're only meeting once a month. So in the scheme of things, it really hasn't been a lot of time for the deep diving that was required. We had to learn about what was in place before we could even comment on it. So that led to a lot of presentations. That took up a lot of the meetings. So um, I feel that there could be a lot more work to, to be done. And uh, I'll leave it at that. And thank you very much for your time. Let me see. Is it Milo? Milo, yes. M-I-L-O? M-E-L-O. OK. And thank you thank for you. your work yeah, on the task force. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for the yeah. time on that. Yeah, mm -hmm. thank you. So Randall, to um, catch you up, we're going to end this meeting at 7.15 because we need to go into executive session so that you and the two chiefs can get to city council by 8 o'clock was the request, okay. Um, yeah, please, please, please uh, introduce yourself too. Hi everyone, my name is Gina Clipero. I am an organizer with Nomas Polymigra. I work with Migrant Justice and we are working to strengthen Burlington's fair and impartial policing policy. And I'm here today because I was just notified um, that there will be a discussion on the fair and impartial policing policy tonight. And I'm not entirely sure if it is the version that we revised, um, we being Migrant Justice, ACLU of Vermont, and um, our, our group of community organizers supporting this effort. Um, but if it is not the version that we have proposed, I would um, propose that in the future, in the near future, uh, City Council is currently working to um, push this forward. And it should end up on your desk soon if it's not tonight. Um, and if the version on your desks tonight is not the version that we put together, um, I would just encourage you all to um, be open to the fact that um, you know this police commission, there was a variety of uh, public forums that took place in 2017 surrounding the Fair and Impartial Policing Policy. And there was um, resounding community support for the strongest policy possible. And that is what we are putting forward. Um, and it is a, um, the policy um, is taking the strong aspects from the Winooski policy and also is addressing, bringing the current Burlington Fair and Impartial Policing Policy into compliance with state law. Um, at this point, the current Fair and Impartial Policing Policy is, um, is, does not meet the state model policy for fair and impartial policing. Um, there, were, there are certain standards that need to be put in place and it's overdue, but while we look to revise the policy, I would strongly urge you all to uh, consider the fact that we are working with city council to pass a resolution um, to direct uh, the police commission to adopt a stronger fair and impartial policing policy that um, is as strong as the Winooski policy, which is stronger than the state model policy. Um, 
and prevents any form of collaboration with Immigration and Customs Enforcement and the Burlington Police Department. Um, this is a crucial issue. Um, it's time sensitive. We are trying to get this done um, within the next month. Um, we had hoped to get this on the City Council agenda tonight. Um, unfortunately, it will not be on the City Council agenda tonight. Kurt Wright, the um, City Council President, has decided to push it to later. Um, we are hoping to get this passed as soon as possible, sometime in March. So stay tuned for more information if you don't already have our policy at your fingertips. Um, as I said before, this is something that was put together with Migrant Justice and um, verified by the ACLU of Vermont. Um, and if you'd like any more information, um, you feel free to email me. I'll put my contact information down somewhere. and Or you can reach out to Migrant Justice. Okay, thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Gina, how would we know that whether we have the most That's current what I was policy? Ask, yeah. how, do we, how do we know if we have the most current policy? Um, so do you mean what you're talking about tonight? Yeah, you mentioned that you you mentioned a couple of times, you know, if we have the most current policy, and I don't see inversion control I, I, when it's I don't think with it's your changes, with your right. suggested right. edits. We because yeah. we have edits that don't include that, but right. I've actually never seen the migrant justice ACLU proposed in the context of the, the draft. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We have the edits and actually um, Joy from the city attorney's office when it when it With comes time to the agenda has I don't I'm not sure Joy yeah, will be able to explain that to us. So. We have the edits okay. that came directly from the city attorney's office. Right. So right. the right. suggestions. So we're gonna be talking about those tonight. Yeah, those are well, those will be different. Um, yeah. the city attorney, she's done a preliminary review of the edits that we put forward, but um, the last email that I saw she wanted to talk to the AG's office about the version that we proposed. Um, so I don't think that that's what is on your desk tonight. Okay. So we've got some edits to bring us up to the state model state policy. law yeah. exactly um, and then the Winooski policy um, goes beyond and, and provides further protection for immigrant communities it um, is has also been certified by um, the AG's office for this for the state of Vermont but it is stronger than the state okay. model policy and um, according to H518 which is the House bill passed in 2018 um, any policy that is as strong as um, essentially the state model policy is considered a floor, not a ceiling. So any policy that goes stronger and provides greater protection will be certified by the AG's office. Um, it just has to, at, at a bare minimum, meet the state model policy standard. And so this goes above the state okay, model policy. Can you policy. clarify what you mean by certified by the Attorney General's office? So they conduct a review of the policy and um, once it's certified, it's it can be passed into law. I'm not. I'm not familiar with the AG's office <coughs> certifying anything. Of I am saying Jane. that it's that it's yeah, consistent policy. with the state model policy. Yeah. So remember back in in 17 when we when we did uh, uh what was it uh, Act 54? Yeah. And it was uh, so Jen and I sat with the um, ACLU as well as Migrant Justice working on this policy back a few years ago. Right. And uh, I think the last iteration that came out in. Um, I want to say it was um, 18, no, 17. I think that's when I kind of walked a step back. I think you did too a little bit. Uh, there was a directive that indicated that the first step needed to be that the attorney general needed to go in and ensure that it was, you know, uh, past the, what is it, Title VIII, uh, all of those other numbers that go with that. Uh, that that was one thing that needed to happen. Then after that, the council needed to go in, in uh, it, so there was a number of steps, but as I recall, there was a requirement for TJ to go in and ensure that they comply with uh, federal standards. Right. I, I'm, Joy, I, perhaps you could have more to say, but mm -hmm. I'm, I believe that the speaker is leading you to believe mm -hmm. that the Attorney General's office mm -hmm. has approved a policy that is more restrictive mm -hmm. than the state model policy. Oh, no, that's and not what I And in fact, mean. that is not the case that I am aware of. So I just want to make sure that we're really using our words carefully here. Okay. The, the Attorney General's Office does not certify a policy that is that makes agencies ineligible to receive federal funding. So, my understanding of what the AG's office has been doing is just going through each of these policies to make sure that they have all of the elements that the state model policy right. has. And then each the police department is required to adopt that policy, if they fail to do so, they're considered to have adopted the model policy. Can, can you say that one more time? I'm, I'm sorry. So what what the state AG's office is checking for is just that 
policy contains each of the elements that are in the state's model policy. Um, it's not a statement that the policy is compliant with federal law. Right. So th I, I want to make sure we're clear. The state, yeah. the AG is just making sure that each agency meets the elements of the model policy. Right. I believe that we were being led to believe mm -hmm. that more restrictive policies were, quote, certified by the AG's office, and I don't believe that is the The process is, the, the technical term is certified. I wasn't trying to lead anybody okay. to believe anything other than that. That is the technical term. Sure, as long as the policy that was presented to them meets the standard of the model policy, they're going to say, yep, we've met all the essential elements of that <coughs> policy. Okay. The essential elements, well, I, I, I think we should just move on from this because I, we could split hairs well, on this. But I, I don't think I heard that. I don't think I heard what you're, you're saying either. I did remember that there was a, a, a time where TJ was verifying that these policies were compliant with federal statute, um, these uh, policies that were implemented. I'm not suggesting that that's what I'm hearing, that she's saying that, she, that he's certifying illegal policies. I'm not saying they're okay. illegal. Okay. We have on the agenda the we're going to be talking about what the city attorney wants us to review. So we'll do that. So thank you. Yep. Thank you. And I look forward to hearing your review of the stronger policies. Thanks. Um, aside from Mr. Winkleman, is there anybody else that wants to uh, participate in public forum? No? Okay. We had uh, Charles Winkleman who wants to address us, and I waited till you came. So, um, yep, Mr. Winkleman? Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. 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 All right, so thank you for the opportunity to speak. Um, for those who don't know me, my name is Charles Winkleman. Um, I'm here because I watched last meeting's uh, last meeting, last police commission meeting, and it, it seemed like there was some confusion about the complaints that I had uh, submitted. And so uh, I went through my email and found the timeline of the complaints that I had submitted to this commission, uh, which included uh, one on March 30th, uh, which was never addressed. Uh, one on April 25th, which eventually was addressed. Sorry, of this year? Of last year, oh, sorry, 20, 2019. My apologies. Yes, yes. Um, the second complaint, um, emails uh, saying that there would be an outside investigation that would take place, um, which I never got any information about. Um, eventually saying that it was the mayor's decision, and that was after a month of not hearing anything. Um, and then um, at one point another uh, qu kind of question I had made in May um, that was just entirely ignored, uh, which included both Hart and Ash on the email, um, and, and absolutely no one responded to it at all. Um, and, and so there was two formal complaints, one informal complaint, uh, which were really not ever addressed. Um, and, and I, I guess, I mean, Mike's here because he also went tried to go through the process here. Um, and, and really, we both found it to be so lackluster, um, it, it is just the way I'm going to put it. Uh, there's a reason people aren't coming to these meetings. It's because when people are actually putting themselves out there, I mean, my name is still in the media. I still have to deal with, with this. Um, I'm the one who, who, who wrote a blog post that, that put my own uh, reputation, my own career on the line. Um, and the fact that the only reason I'm here today is because Mark reached out to me uh, is really concerning. It's concerning that the chair wouldn't reach out, that the co-chair, that, that, that no one else in the past three months since any of this broke uh, reached out to say, hey, we would like to hear from you and we would like to, to, to understand what we could do differently. And that's really concerning. Um, I know that the commission doesn't have a lot of power, but my understanding was you at least can do this. So I'm happy to answer any questions, uh, happy to clarify uh, the timeline. Um. <clears throat> Charles, thank you, thank you for coming. I, I, yeah. I'm glad you did come because I, I was trying to get to the bottom of this as well because it, right, I think which is, that- Which is what we talked about. Yeah. This, most of this stuff predates me. Uh, so I, I am, and even if it didn't, you know, I'm still just as much a part of this yeah. mission as everybody else. So I'm, 
I you know accept full responsibility for for anything that, that that's going on here. So I, I just want to better understand um, the um, the timeline. Yeah. Are you yeah. saying that you are you saying that you submitted a a, um, a complaint in March? And you and that that just never was responded to at all. It was never responded to at all. Um, the only reason I had any evidence about the complaint was that I happened to screenshot it right afterwards. Um, but sh right afterwards, there was an email um, from uh, Deputy Murad Wright and Del Pozo um, saying, first, a please do not respond to him, and then a second email from Del Pozo saying, I have a good set of responses you can help me with on Monday. I never got any response to that, which is why um, a mo about a month later, I emailed Michelle, uh, asked if she had gotten it. She said no. And then on the 25th, the day after, I, I resubmitted a second complaint. Um, okay. and, and I felt like that was never addressed at all. OK. Thank you. <clears throat> I think from my perspective, just to add in there, I think black busters are really kind term. Um, I found it intimidating. We had that conversation. It's recorded. You can watch it if you want. Um, and Shireen, I remember approaching you before the meeting saying, I don't think I'm going to be treated well. And my memory of that meeting was that you didn't do much to, to help that. You didn't apologize afterwards. Nobody's communicated with me at all about social media policy or solicited my input, even though that's something I talked to the chief about three years ago. Um, and I think the really odd part, and I keep saying the same damn thing, is that my process started three years ago with a, what felt like a good meeting with the police chief, where we, we came to some agreements, and I left espousing his <laughs> virtues in the community. So, your name, sir? I'm sorry. Uh, Mike Fife, I'm sorry. Fife. I've never met. Yeah, no, Mike Fife. Fife. I'm Jen. Yeah, nice to meet you. Um, so, and, and it's odd for me, right? So, Charles is talking about his reputation in the community. You know, at my job, I needed to talk to my boss and say, hey, I might be in a, in a, in a news story. That's not comfortable. I don't want to do that. Um, like, this isn't stuff I want to be doing. Um, in, in. And, and it's odd that people are like, Hey, you got what you wanted. Chief Del Pozo got fired. They're like, that's not what I wanted. What I wanted was a social media policy. I I wanted to come to a meeting and, and talk about what I thought was an, an important topic to the community that I find interesting. And I found absolutely no engagement. And then I found somebody going back on the agreements. And when I said, what's going on there, I was told, I get to do what I want. I actually have an email where I was informed that what I was asking for led towards fascism. I mean, like, and I don't need to get into Chief Del Pozo's history, and I actually think he's a fine person, but there's this weird dynamic of, like, feeling framed as an aggressor in all of this. Um, and it's just odd uh, and unsatisfying, and if anybody asks me if I thought they should engage in this process. I told them no. Yeah, I, I would I'd be like, don't like, like the wind, man. Like, that's my advice. I don't engage. You're going to be treated poorly. You're not going to get responses. And that's what I felt for both of you. I'm sure you're fine people and you're busy and there's a lot of reasons, but it's been pretty ill mannered. I mean, and, and I would say the the idea that the, the commission. Uh, would go around and, and, and speak to the public and, and ask for the public to be honest and to share some of their stories. I, I, I can't see this commission doing that. And I can't see people wanting to come. I mean, it, it, I, I don't think most people see this commission as being on the side of citizens. And yes, there's not supposed to be that divide, but for a lot of people there is. And I don't see anyone coming to this commission in feeling this is a safe space. That this is a space where people can share about the brutality that has happened to them. I have friends, uh, a friend who got beaten back in November and got tased. 
he is not coming to this commission. He has zero interest in coming to this commission. He has zero interest in, in filing a police report or, or a complaint because that's how little trust he has in this entire system. Charles, was that, <clears throat> that first complaint you filed, was it filed online? I'm, yes. I'm asking this question for a yep. specific reason. Okay. Yeah, it, it was. Um, it, 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 the screenshot I have is the Burlington Police Department online citizen complaint form. Okay. Um, it has the submission date. There's no uh, number to it, unfortunately. But it has the time, 1807. Um, and, I mean, I, I would add that uh, five minutes after uh, right forwarded that and said, just an FYI, please do not respond. So, I mean, it, it was responded to internally very quickly. Thanks. Yeah. I'm sorry to go on about all that. I guess the question I have is like, is there any... Should we come any, back? Any feelings Should we come you, back? All, you all, <laughs> any motions to change processes, like... What's up? It's been a while. Well, Mike, that's, that's the reason why I'm, I invited you here yeah. is, is, is because, yeah, I mean. Um, Mr. Fife, yeah. I actually called the police chief and suggested to him that he apologize to you. But so, you told me that. It right? wasn't so ignored like that, because so I thought the chief should apologize to you for that meeting. And okay? this is, but this but is obviously the first he didn't heed what I suggested. And you didn't tell me that until I, I showed did up not. at a meeting. I was hoping that the chief was going to do, make the choice that I was suggesting. And, but just so you know, that's that. the discussion we had. But because I, I don't want to speak for others, but I didn't think that that meeting was the chief's best behavior, to be honest. Great. And so what is, is problematic in that situation? Like, thank you for doing that. And I mean this genuinely. Like, thanks. And I understand that what I'm asking for is an act of courage, but he has since been fired. That apology wasn't going to come to me, right? And maybe he told you it came, maybe he didn't. I don't know. But now you have a relationship with me, and you took no steps to repair that relationship. And he was going to take no steps to repair it because he's been let go. And, and that's terrible for him. But the relationship between you and me is only getting this information put into it because I just showed up here on the invitation of somebody else. And so what my expectation is, or, or what my, my hope would be, and I, I, again, I'll say it's hard to do, if that's a hard thing to do, would be that once he got let go or you found out that he didn't apologize, that you reach out to me and you apologize. And, and that didn't happen, and now, like, it kind of can't. Because so, I'm asking for I, I hear what you're saying, that's, but that's I can't apologize. I'm not going to apologize for the chief. And that wasn't the commission asking him to apologize. That was me speaking. You know, we didn't talk as a commission and say, that was just me speaking with him directly. Of, Look, it, it, I, in my opinion, you owe him an, an apology. Sure. <clears throat> so you're right I didn't apologize, you're right about that. And you could have, but you could have reached out and said, like, there's a million ways you could have intervened and tried to repair that relationship with me. Hey, that meeting was a rough one. I hope you'll come back. Mm -hmm. Hey, like, there's there's a lot of things you could have said, and they all would have taken an act of courage. And I get that that's a big ask. Um, and it didn't happen. And that's that's all there is to it, right? Like, it could not. I, there's a lot of things that don't happen in my life, like that I wish did. And so, like, I'm not trying to judge you for it. Like, I wish I paid my bills on time. I wish I was better to my friends and responded to them more. Like, these things happen. So I'm not trying to present this as a judgment. I'm presenting it as feedback that, like, it's Mike, only let, happening because I was invited here by Mark. Yeah, let me let me just yeah. say that the there's there's a kind of a, a method I think to at least my madness, and I'm, I'm hoping that there's, you know, that we would pick up on this is is that there we need some closure. Everybody needs closure. Uh, I'm glad you came. Speaking of acts of courage, this is that. Um, I, I really, you know, I really personally, as a commissioner, I offer an apology. Okay, I can't speak for the rest of this commission. Okay, but it pains me to see what it is that you have experienced personally. Okay, and I hope that what we can do is we can figure out internally 
uh, how we can go about you know, making the necessary adjustments so this doesn't occur in the future, so we can better understand what transpired, so we can be better conduits to our community. That's, that is why I'm here, to serve you. I think that's my hope too. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for coming. <clears throat> yes. All right, well, I appreciate you both coming. Thank you. Anybody else have any <clears throat> questions or comments? Thank you. Anybody else from the public? Thank you. Um, we're skipping the chief's report, Randall. Uh, task force update. Um, <laughs> the update is the report. Thank you for sending that to us. Um, are there any highlights or anything that you'd like to talk about in that? Jeffrey or Randall? Uh, sorry, I have one. <laughs> so does this get presented, to, are you presenting it this evening to the commission? Uh, I'm showing up to city council tonight. They have the report. Okay, I, they I'm have the report. I don't know if they're going to ask me to make a presentation or not. I wasn't intending to. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, my understanding is that uh, city council is going to review this and most likely make a resolution that kicks it back to the police commission to look at all of the recommendations. Okay. That's, that's what I, I, I don't know if that's going to happen, but I think that's what's going to happen. <clears throat> I just want to thank you because I thought it was, uh, I know it was a short time period, a lot of diverse opinions, and not an easy thing to accomplish, but I do, I do think it gives us some things to work on. All right, so there, there were suggestions both for the police commission and as well as, you know, for mayor, city council, and things both. Yeah. Um, also, um, uh, in a process by which people get notified about things. So, right. so not, not all of the recommendations were for police commission, but there were obviously a number of recommendations that were for the police commission. Mm -hmm. So were you going to go over that report at all with us today, or is that what the purpose of this update is for, or what? Uh, so again, I mean, I, I distributed the report. I assume everyone had a chance to read the report. If people would like mm -hmm. to go over it, I'm happy to. Um, I assume people don't want me to read it. For no, here, no. So. Well, no, obviously Thank not. You. But I was just wondering if there was there was anything that is there are there any highlights to the report? I mean, we do have a community in the room. Maybe I don't know that they've seen the report. Well, I mean, so the, the, the report is kind of getting presented to City Council tonight, and again, I, because of my snafu in my calendar, I, I did not have this meeting scheduled for tonight. So I apologize for that. Um, there were, the, the report was divided into three basic sections. The first section was with respect to use of force policy. There were recommendations made about how a use of force policy for BPD should be updated. Um, again, I won't go through those items point by point, but I'll just say that there was um, you know, that, that one of the things that the, that the committee encouraged BPD to do in updating its use of force policy was to um, emphasize and clarify the extent to which de-escalation is expected of all officers, and uh, and then updating the first policy so that, that is so that those expectations are clear. So that would be some of the some of the the ways of summarizing what's happening in the first section on use of force policy. Uh, the second section is talking about the um, the way in which the police commission serves as a kind of oversight in an oversight capacity. Um, one of the questions of course is just how it is that oversight happens in Burlington as a community, as a town. And so there were discussions about whether or not the, the fundamental framework of how oversight happens should be changed or not. And that fundamental framework right now is that the police commission, again, serves as primarily an oversight body in the sense that it has uh, visibility into decisions that are made, but it does not have ultimate uh, decision-making power, it does not itself discipline officers. And also the police commission does not have kind of independent investigatory power, it does not have subpoena power, et cetera. So there were some discussions about whether or not that overall framework was the, was the appropriate framework. Um, the decision of the committee as a whole was that the police commission could serve to have some greater, I will say investigatory powers in the sense that the police commission should be, that the, people, the complainants should be encouraged to talk with members of the police commission in order to share their opinions and perspectives, and that, that the police commission should also be encouraged to follow up with complainants 
about resolutions of their complaints. I think that might go some way towards addressing some of the concerns that were raised uh, by uh, Mr. <coughs> Fife and Mr. Winkleman about not hearing what was happening with their complaints. Uh, but the committee as a whole uh, did not think that it was necessary for Burlington, that, or, uh, the committee as a whole did not recommend a fundamental change to whether or not the police commission should be directly disciplining or doing independent investigations of complaints. Uh, there are some practical obstacles to doing that, including the required changes of the city charter, required changes of the union contract. But we didn't, uh, we did not limit our discussion about how oversight should happen based on matters like that. So it was, you know, so people still discussed and, and, and debated what kind of oversight model the Burlington Police Department should have independent of what sorts of practical things would need to happen in order to make that change happen. Uh, there were some other changes with respect to how oversight should happen, but again, it, uh, some, of, some of that involving the role that the Burlington Police Commission should play in complaints involving the chief. Uh, as, you know, so, so the thought was that there should, you know, the Burlington Police Commission should have some clear oversight over the behavior of the chief. Um, and that should be made explicit if it's not already explicit. And also that, um, uh, that, that the police commission should receive complaints in a more prompt, fa in more prompt and regular fashion than I think we've been receiving so far. That we should have access to those complaints um, in a way which goes beyond the, way we, the access that we have currently. Uh, we've had some discussion on the police commission about that as well. So that has been basically crafting some of the recommendations. The third section, third subset section is about a, a list of other suggestions that the committee made, which kind of, I don't want to say it's a kind of potpourri, but there are other issues that we didn't have the chance to talk about, talk about in as much depth uh, because city council requested that the, that the committee focus its attention on uh, use of force policy and oversight. But we made several other recommendations as well, including a recommendation that, uh, that BPD have further uh, social service partnerships, perhaps modeled after the Denver model that we've discussed in this commission in the past. Uh, you know, kind of involving social service workers with uh, uh, you know, riding along with officers. Uh, the recommendations about the, the police commission having meetings in the community rather than just having meetings here. Uh, there are also recommendations that the, that the police department make further outreaches into the community rather than, um, you know, in, in order to kind of you know, um, develop relationships and, and repair relationships with the community. Um, I could probably go down that list in order if necessary, but um, I think that's useful for highlights. Mello talked about the volume of information that this committee had to synthesize, the huge amount of information that went to it. Over close to a dozen meetings, this group dived into tremendous amounts of material and came up with a wide range of different ideas and not always in the most coherent or formal kind of ways. And somehow, Randall was able to synthesize that, take a huge array of both information and ideas and proposals from all across the spectrum and find consensus in that when we had never, or at least very rarely, had formal votes of such consensus during the process. And nevertheless, carve that out, create this report entirely single-handedly, bring it to the body at the final meeting in a way that did finally have votes for consensus on each point and produce a document that's now going to be presented to the council. And it's, it's stunning that he did it. I don't know quite how he did it. We have a use of force policy draft that is uh, largely in comportment with what's recommended in here um, and can be tweaked additionally based on the input of this body and other bodies. But the document that is the committee's uh, history is his and his alone, and it's phenomenal. It's a huge amount of work. Thanks, Ben. <clears throat> I found it curious as the newcomer that the committee's report intersects with everything we've talked about already. Yeah, like, yeah. like yeah. yes, at the risk of insulting anyone's great idea, it feels like it's redundant and that this body should be able to handle all the things that are in that report and it dovetails nicely with the <clears throat> trying to update the role of the police commission in right. discipline because it could also be the role of the police commission in fill in the blank, policy development, etc. So I thought that that report 
fits nicely with where I perceive we are mm -hmm. right now on, on this commission. That policy that came out of there, uh, mm -hmm. what's next on it? The, uh, I'm sorry, which policy? The draft policy, use of force. There's a oh. draft policy that came out, right? Yes. That draft policy is, is going to be revamped based on the final meeting of the committee and then once approved by the chief of police will be presented to the police commission. But we'll probably wait to see whether or not anything comes from tonight's meeting with the uh, city council to determine whether or not there's additional input there prior to making the draft changes. What was presented to the committee in draft form is largely what informed the recommendations here. These are recommendations for stuff that's largely in the draft that they already received. To the extent that there may be one or two things here that the draft needs to readdress, we'll do so, incorporate whatever other inputs, and eventually present it to the committee, the commission, as we are required to do in order to have a final <coughs> policy that's, that's so approved. This, so this body will be the last stop? This body is the approval body for all directives. Okay, so we right. would, we wouldn't we wouldn't see it before such time as the other. I will send it to you in a draft form as soon as. Well, I, I have it already, but I. I'll no, just no, no. He's saying that more. what you have is likely or, or possibly right. will be updated based on feedback that he, that we hear at the city council meeting mm -hmm. tonight. Mm -hmm. um, so that there might be another iteration okay. of this draft to come to you. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> and I, I would just say one thing, just really quickly. I mean, so right, I did see the draft use of force policy in constructing the report, but also again, the, the, the items that, that the committee identified for things that the, draft, that the use of force policy should include uh, were, I think, also discussed separately. I and mean, that was kind of part of this entire process. And there were also things that were recommended by various uh, organizations across the country for what use of, good use of force policies should look like, uh, both you know, kind of police force and also community, force, you know, community uh, organizations about what use of, use, use of force policies should look like. So, uh, right, so, that, so um, I don't think DCMI was suggesting that, but it wasn't kind of tailored to what was already in the report that, that we looked at. It was um, mm -hmm. based on a number of both the discussions in the committee and also research about what use force policies should include. Um, yeah. Well, the draft in turn was defined by the previous half dozen or, or, or ten meetings that it preceded it and all the things that had been talked about in that process. Great. Well, I can imagine how difficult it was because you're also taking folks on the committee that are not need to be educated on policing before they can even have and understand all of the current policies and then have an opinion. So it's uh, yeah. so thank you. Um, last meeting we talked about having input, and I and I don't know if anyone here. Is, in from the public wants to talk about that but we decided we, we said let's put on the agenda um, some public input on some characteristics that we're looking for in the chief of police um, would anybody from the public like to uh, share any thoughts um, any commissioners want to share any specific thoughts um, other than what we talked about last time No? Okay. Um, Joy? Oh, Gina. Oh, c please. <laughs> please. Um, I don't have a lot to say if you prepare any remarks on this, but I would hope that the new police commissioner, uh, police chief, would be um, supportive of the fair and impartial policing policy that we are putting forward and that uh, would be engaged actively in robust um, racial bias training. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, so Joy for, is from the city attorney's office and we all got a copy of the proposed changes <clears throat> to the fair, fair and impartial uh, policing policy. And she is here to talk about those with us and answer any questions we may have. So just to begin, this, the draft that you have in front of you, these are just the changes from the city's attorney's mm -hmm. office that came about after discussion with the Attorney General's office. So these are the changes that we need to add to become compliant with state law. And so that is all that is in this draft. And those are in Section 7. It's D yeah. and E. D and E. Yeah. And this language is taken from the state's model policy.
So is it of the opinion of the city attorney's office that with these changes, this puts us in compliance? Yes, and that this was the result of fairly lengthy conversations with the attorney general's office. Um, and they agreed that these changes will bring the city's policy into compliance. Okay. And my understanding is that this is also being put forth, I mean, city council is still is looking at this. Is I, that true? On March 9th. Don't believe so. Um, at least not tonight. Not tonight. No. I think it is on March, for March 9th. Yeah. March 9th. Okay. So I think for us, does anybody have any questions for Joy about the changes, the proposed changes in D&E? Um, it doesn't sound like it's something we should really vote on because we should need to wait until after the March 9th meeting from City Council to see if there's anything I agree. else. <clears throat> Because, I mean, have, have you had a chance to review the proposed changes by, uh, by migrant justice and whether those would, in fact, put us out of compliance with federal law? Um, yes, and so it's the city attorney's opinion that those changes would not be in compliance with federal law. <clears throat> Is it um, four? Do I understand that there are four requests? Yes. There okay. Are four requests Okay, and so the city attorney's office looked at each of those four items? Yes, we've gone through the draft that I believe was the most recent draft that was sent to us. Um, and to address, I believe the state did say that Winooski's policy is in compliance with the state law, which is that minimum of it has every element of the state's model policy. However, after talking to the attorney general's office, they were not reviewing to see if that policy was in compliance with federal law. And my understanding was that their position is that Winooski's policy is not in compliance with federal law. <clears throat> so the, you're saying it is in compliance with state law? Yes, in so that that's it the is. Floor, yes. Right? So, but it's TJ saying it's not in compliance with federal law. Correct. That's not when the state said that yes, this has every element of the model policy. They were not commenting on whether or not it was compliant with federal law, and they indicated <clears throat> to me that they thought it was not. So you may not know this, but so when TJ reviewed the policy, I did find Jim the segment I was looking for was back in Section Five of Act Fifty Four in two thousand and seventeen. It says on or before two thousand and seventeen, the Criminal Justice Training Council in consultation with the Attorney General shall review and modify the, the, the model fair and impartial policing policy to the extent necessary to bring the policy into compliance with Title VIII in uh, 1373 and 1644. So it's the model that the Attorney General needed to actually review. So I'm assuming that what he did was is he that they were in compliance with the state policy in 17 I'm not Has sure. Changed since then? I'm not sure when that determination yeah. was made, but when I spoke to them, um, I made sure we were talking about the, their version of the policy that we have been seeing and has been included. In Do you know experience. how much uh, community-oriented policing services grant money is on the line? I do not have an answer to that. Um, I John, do you know? All of it. How much is it? How I much know. is it? I know specifically we, have, we submitted a public records request mm -hmm. from the Bloomington Police Department. Um, so as of 2000, in fiscal year 2017, the Wellington Police Department has not applied for additional justice assistance grant funds. The only funds on the line are justice assistance grant funds. In total, um, that was a total of $38,000 from 2017. Those funds at this point in time, as of um, December, those funds had almost entirely been uh, spent and um, there was no um, in, there was no indication from the folks that we spoke with at, um, at the police department, and I don't have the email in front of me to give you the name, um, but it was someone who's involved in grants and applications. There was no indication that they are, if they are going to apply for further funding. Therefore, um, the threat of withholding funds as a result of this policy um, that we are proposing being out of compliance with Section 81373 is not a threat to Burlington's funding. Okay, thank you for that. So, and even if it was, wouldn't it be, it, it would be a fiduciary 
fiduciary call made by the council anyway, if, if they wanted to, if they wanted to risk, if they decided they wanted to take that risk, because certainly we're not, we're not going to make that decision, right? I, I, I would object to any notion that the city council sets policy for the Burlington Police Department. <clears throat> this body sets policy for the Burlington Police Department. The council advises the commission, can certainly advise the chief of police, mm -hmm. but the city council does not set policy for the Burlington Police Department. So why are we taking the policy over for them to review it then? According to city charter, Burlington City Council does have the authority to set policy. Yeah, all of the authority. And um, for the Burlington Police Department, and that is what happened in 2017 with the passage of mm -hmm. The, the Burlington Fair and Impartial Policing Policy that is currently in place. That was um, a resolution to adopt a the, the particular Fair and Impartial Policing Policy by the City Council, voted on by City Councilors, put into place. The Police Commission was involved in reviewing that policy and making sure that it was aligned with um, the interests of Burlington Police, made sure that there were there was um, engagement from the Police Department in that, um, and Chief Del former Chief Del Pozo, he was in support of that policy, and um, so yeah, brilliant. So the policy that we're now amending again. Yes. <clears throat> and it, um, it, see, it, it seems like it stands to reason. Isn't that why we're taking it over for them to review it before we take a look at it in the first place? I'm I mean, sorry. We're not, we're not going to override this, the city council, are we? Well, so when, when you say that the city charter grants the city, grants the, the city council the ability to set policy <laughs> for the Burlington Police Department, would, what in the city charter are you looking at? Um, so I'm looking at section 184, same powers and duties. The first sentence is, the city council shall make rules and regulations for the government of the entire police force and shall fix the qualifications of applicants for positions and service on said force, and the chief of police shall furnish the city council with any information they may require concerning the finances of the department. <clears throat> and our authority is delegated from that. So again, the the question that I was asking, or the statement I was making, really was: this, the fiduciary responsibility for making a decision like that, just like a decision is made uh, at a statewide level on policy concerning a woman's right to govern her own body, for example, or a constitutional amendment, or marijuana laws, or the Constitution, you know, eradicating slavery when it's still permitted in the Thirteenth Amendment. Okay, all of those fiduciary responsibilities, they lie on the council. It's not on us. So they, if they figure that they want to allow this policy to move forward, then they got to figure out where the hell to get that $38,000. It's just that simple. I don't even know why we're actually having that conversation at this level, quite frankly. Because if they say we have to do it, that's what we do. Well, we're... The city attorney asked us to review this, mm -hmm. so. So again, I, I apologize because I, I just had to get my internet. Could you give me the section again, city charter? 184. Thank you. You know, everything you said might be true, and I can promise you I was not present when that happened about the city council imposing policy. I will tell you that that's a one-off in my experience. That that is not the way the process of policy development has happened and I think you guys are the historical at least over the last four or five years knowledge bearers of this of all the directives yeah. that back in the day before I left in 2013 the chief of police wrote policy period and the police commission has a much more established role now in the review and, and adoption of those policies so it's a much more of a <clears throat> not the police chief just writing it and saying this is what our policy is going to be. So there's a much more active role of the commission in that. Mm -hmm. If the city council promulgated an FIPP policy, mm -hmm. that sounds to me like a political one-off. Mm -hmm. That is not the standard operating procedure for the Burlington Police Department. Mm -hmm. And candidly, I will be, say it loud and clear, it should mm -hmm. not be. <clears throat> there I there is a separation between politics and administration of a police department and that's what I understand the role of the police commission to be. Well, so, Jen, I think between the two worlds. So I think that the, you're right. There is a separation between <coughs> politics and policy, but the politics drive the policy. And all I'm getting at is is that, you know, if the city council is of the political opinion that that is the route that they want to take in terms of sanctuary, okay, then that will drive the development of the policy that's necessary to accommodate that particular political position. Is all I'm getting at. And you're right, they shouldn't be writing policy. But if, if at the end of the day they say, we're willing to take the risk, 
but that's why I think the role of the police commission is mm -hmm. to be the buffer between the police department in, mm -hmm. and the council in this matter mm -hmm. so that politics are not infused inside the walls of the police department. Well, let me give you an example. Mm -hmm. There was a resolution that we needed to consider our role in handling citizen complaints. That was a resolution that came from the city council, mm -hmm. but the city council is not writing the policy for that. <coughs> so I think we're kind of both saying the same thing. The city council can say can write a resolution to say we want you to look at this, and here, here's here's mm -hmm. what our resolution states. Now, commission, go do your work. My, yes. my final my final right. say on this is just, the, and then I'll leave it alone. Is is that at the end of the day. If the city council and the mayor in, in the office of the city attorney, they say, we understand the risk associated with this particular policy or with this particular position as a city. And, and we understand that, yeah, there could possibly be $38,000 lost as a result not, of it. It is more than that. There is co we have well, okay, $138,000. Whatever the number is, it's not the point, John. The point I'm making, the, the point I'm making, the, well, at, the, at a statewide the level, yeah, I've seen that. Changed its definition of what it will or will not withhold. Got it. Continuing my thought process, whatever that number is, what I'm getting at is, is that decision is theirs. Okay? The number is not important, John. The decision, who makes the decision is important. Who who accepts the risk? Certainly I don't. Well, so again, I mean, DD01 says that Department Directive, the Department of Police Department Directive 01 says mm -hmm. that the Burlington Police Commission is the sole authority of all department policies and directives mm -hmm. governing employees of the police department. I agree. So um, it is. So I, there is some, uh, at least apparent tension between that and Chapter Three, Section One Eighty Four, City of City Charter. Um, it's my understanding that that has been one of the powers, one of the powers that has been delegated to the police commission by City Council. So it's possible that could also be um, kind of rescinded, as it were. But I, I think that it's. It's not correct to say that we don't have any role to play in setting that policy. I don't think anybody said that. I would ask you to not surrender the, the current uh, workflow relative to promulgation of policy in the, in the police department. Yeah, if I could just, just clarify, this draft that you have from the city attorney's office is not what is being brought before city council. We brought this here because we thought this commission is the appropriate place for policy. Um, and our recommendation also would be that the community groups that are trying to get the more changes made also bring that here for the purpose of discussion. Because I think that this is the appropriate forum for that. Right, I think we're all saying the same thing. That this is the right place for policy to be developed. So what's on the agenda for March 9th for city council? Okay. I don't know, keep showing up at, on my city leadership meeting agenda that FIPP is on the agenda. So I, I don't know. I'm, it's not something that the police department is asking to be on the agenda about. I suspect it's the community organizer groups that um, perceive that they are going to go to the council instead of to the commission. Okay. Um, so does anybody have any comments? or questions for Joy regarding the proposed changes that were put forth to us? <clears throat> so, for Joy. procedurally, are you gonna move to push this off until after the city council hears the input? Is that, I mean, I presented a memo to you asking you to adopt changes to our FIPP policy happy to circle back around after the meeting happens with the city council or I'm, I'm looking for guidance from I, I, I would now. request I mean I, I would like us to have a, a further discussion about this I'm worried that we're not gonna have the time to do that right now um, and also I think there might be more, more information would be relevant for our debate down the line so I'd suggest that we um, put it off till March put off the discussion until okay. our next meeting it's a motion that's a motion that second. We post, that we second all in favor aye aye, aye. aye. It doesn't feel like we're ready to to vote on this. Um, Joy, appreciate you coming. Yeah, thank you. Um, let me ask you this, because it is hard to get work, you know, some of the nitty gritty work done. I have two things that I'm thinking about. One is, as far as the fair and impartial policing, 
does it make sense for two of us, and I'm happy to be one of them, um, to meet with the city attorney and Jen around this? Chief Murad, good point, Thomas. And Chief Murad? Um, I'll go with you. Okay, we can have three. Is anybody else interested in attending? Well, tell me more about the recommendation. Well, just, you know, Migrant Justice has, has um, I haven't seen the proposed, the proposals that Migrant Justice has put forth. I, I, I haven't heard the, um, the uh, rationale and the, the, um, the law around whether we should or shouldn't adopt it so that we can have like a full discussion around that. Um, so what, so what, I'm just so that we, so that we go and meet with John and the city attorney's office and just sort of dig into it more deeply as commissioners so that we can, in a commission meeting in March, you know, sort of. But you suggest just two or three rather than just the information be brought to all the commissioners? <clears throat> well, I think the information can be brought to all the commissioners. What I'm, what I'm suggesting is that maybe some of the digging in and sort of some of that work that we can come in and sort of answer questions and, I mean, it could be brought to the, the full commission. Well, so, I mean, so I mean, to whatever's going to happen on March 9th, but, I mean, I, I presume so, that something's going to happen, that they're going to make their case publicly on March 9th. That's yeah, that's point. true. So, right, so there's some information that, that we would need, of course, right? So one, you know, obviously, you know, so I, I've looked at Winooski's fair and impartial policing policy. I've also looked at the, at least from a, a few months ago, I think, some of the suggestions by Migrant Justice about ways in which our FIP policy should be updated. Um, I don't have information about, for example, exactly how much uh, money is would be affected. Uh, so I'd like information about that. I'd also like information about kind of the extent to you know whether or not Winooski, you know, you know ha has suffered any requests for having the policy that they have. That's a good question. Um, so I mean, so I, but I, I more or less accept it at, at they have it. face value the the claim that that the proposed changes would in fact put. Uh, BPD's FIP policy uh, at odds with federal policy. Um, so I'm not sure what we would get out of meeting with the okay, so then other than information. I think we just need to discuss what exactly we want to have out of a policy okay. from us. Fair enough. What the, what the benefits and, and costs would be. Uh, I'm happy to answer any questions that you guys have. I've been really involved in the redrafting of the FIP policy for specific questions. Um, but we'll grab some I mean, contact you information from you later. An agenda. Yeah, I mean, my personally, my biggest concern is what does it mean to not be in compliance with the federal law, and what is what are the consequences to the city, and and how is that different than what we have here? I mean, I read through the policy here. It seemed. I mean, I'm not an expert in reading this, but I thought, oh, it's it it seemed like, especially with the um, proposed changes that. Uh, um, I mean, I'm not a fan of the Burlington police turning over and working with ICE, and, and I'm just not a fan of that either. I, so I looked through here, and I, I, it seems like we're protecting um, uh, our immigrants. Uh, but we're complying with the state law, and uh, in anything that we do towards uh, moving towards that model that Winooski has adopted, it will be out of federal compliance. It will be. In We're already more than compliant with, uh, <coughs> with with state law. We are already, if, if the, right. the phrase used was that the state model policy is the floor, we are already above that floor. Mm -hmm. We have, for example, a, as it states in this, a uh, prohibition against making apprehensions for suspicion of border crossing. We have to witness it. That is one of the changes that was made to the Winooski law. We already have that in our policy. Um, in so far as, for example, the situation that occurred with the Chittenden County Sheriff's Office, that was within policy for the Chittenden County Sheriff. It would have been out of policy for us. However, there are certain things that Winooski requests that are not uh, in keeping. For example, they only will share certain information with the person's, uh, with the person's permission. And we are not going to limit ourselves to that absent questions of legitimate law enforcement needs as well as public safety concerns. Now that is not the same as saying that we will enforce civil uh, immigration law, which we simply will not. 
nor is it the same as saying that we report or, or routinely talk to any other federal entity about a person's immigration status uh, if that's the sole reason to have a communication. That, too, is out of policy and does not happen. So there were some suggestions that there were some things that, that would be classified as kind of loopholes in the FIP policy. So putting aside the question of whether or not they, it, it's proper to characterize them as loopholes, do individual officers have kind of the discretion to uh, you know, make decisions which, which would be uh, kind of compliant with the FIP policy, but which might be contrary to what the department you know, wants out of its officers to do? No, they have to go through a supervisor. I think at the end of the day, Randall, is, is the bottom line is, is you know, over Minuski, the reason why, you know, they're not really catching flack is, is because of labor. Okay? Let's just get real. That's what we're talking about. It's labor. It's, re it's the same reason why we have 1,500 migrant workers in the state. It's labor. That's, re that's the reason. That's what's going on. And I think that what we have to understand is it's just one, well, a couple questions is, is you know, are we going to go above, you know, like they did? You know, and, and accept the responsibility, you know, and, and that's somebody's decision. We haven't decided who's. Um, and the other thing is what nobody's really talking about is, is who's going who's to enforce it? Because there's this thing called civilian oversight of law enforcement that have to hold these folks' feet to the fire after we do decide the direction we want to go on it. Because you can say all day long, you can put all day long what you want in this freaking policy. The question is, is how are you going to enforce it? Um, I don't think that's the, the question for well, the It absolutely policy. is. The first Not year we did policy. this, they, the, the, the Criminal Justice Training Council changed it when nobody was looking. It, acts, it absolutely is. The question for adopting a policy is whether the policy is good. No, well, it's also whether or not we can enforce it. It's also whether or not we can hold them accountable to the policy. Otherwise, what are you, that's, that's one of the main reasons why we are in the position that we're in is, is because at the end of the day, you know, you can change policies all day long. If, you, if, if any officer on this force decides he wants to do different, what are you going to do about it? That's the question. But it doesn't seem like it's any different from other policies that we might adopt. <clears throat> I agree to disagree for any interest of time. We should just move forward. Well, can, I, can I say really quickly why, why you think it's different from any, another policy? <clears throat> I don't understand your question. So my suggestion was, okay, this policy is the same thing the policy we might adopt. There are always going to be questions about how you enforce the policy. Mm -hmm. My suggestion was that question applies to any policy we might consider. Sure. So yeah. in the consider when, when we're deliberating about what policy should be adopted, the question of how you would enforce that policy mm -hmm. is going to it's going to be treated the same for every policy we might adopt. So mm -hmm. I'm suggesting that that's a separate question from whether or not a particular policy. I would, to be I would absolutely agree with you. Okay. Yeah, I agree with that. Because well, we're still going to keep coming back to this this idea of where's where's the oversight. Okay, seven fifteen. May still, I actually? Yes. May I ask a question about number Please. seven? And I'm I'm asking because I don't know the answer. Okay. I sent you guys a bunch of stuff that I had worked on yes. about this. What is the um, what are the rules around having a work session? Small group of commissioners or me and all the commissioners, whoever wants to show up, because this is a lot of stuff that actually there's a lot of things we're already talking about that intersect with this document. And I think we could get a lot further down the road in terms of coming up with a draft that's more comprehensive and more accurately re reflects what the overall role of the police commission yes. is. And I think that would be really helpful for the incoming chief. So yes. I'd like to get it done in a timely mm -hmm. manner. But it, I think a work session, a public so, session where we're, we're getting into these lengthy yeah. debates so, is not going to get us. Yeah. To answer your question, I asked Eileen that question because I feel the same way about the, the role of the police commission in reviewing citizen complaints. She said we can do one, two, one of two things. We can meet in smaller groups of up to three people, okay. or we can form a special committee of anyone that wants to be on it to do work in between the police commission meetings. We just have to do a public notice. We can hold it in an office here. We can, you know, we just have to make public notice of those meetings. Um, I, and, and I, guys, I just feel I, like we could get a lot further down the road faster if we can mm -hmm. I agree. have a work session. I, I agree with you. Um, I don't know. Does anybody else have any thoughts around that? I, I agree with that. Um, I think a working group of three commissioners would be good. Well, we can even do more than three. If we do more than three commissioners, we just have to make the meeting. Right. I was just thinking if where it doesn't get, I mean, 
if we want it to be open, that's fine. It, it's just for the ease of meetings where we don't have to. Right. I don't Does have this, I don't have any support staff, God lover, uh, <laughs> to post <laughs> for meetings every time we do a work session. Right. If that helps inform the yes. direction. <clears throat> Okay. I don't have anyone right now. So is it in order to, to make a motion for that for for, for a small meeting? Bit? Should we do that? Do we have three people that are interested? I'm I personally am interested in being part of that small group because this is something that well, uh, I would be interested too. Yeah, we've been working on this for quite a while. Is anyone else interested? Well, we're gonna have to help. So three of us. Yeah, because the other two we're gonna work on the other things. So. Sounds good. Yeah. Okay. So uh, do we even need a motion? Yeah. I don't think we even need a motion. We don't need a motion. Right. So we will coordinate schedules. So I mean, let's we take the recommendations of the task force, yeah. which is great because Jabu, you were on that. Okay. We can take um, Jen's notes. Jen's yeah. notes, okay. and we can come up with an, a draft that incorporates that. That then, we, as a commission, we can look mm -hmm. at, and it'll just yeah. we can make changes to it. I will take the task force recommendations and see okay. how they jive with what I previously mm -hmm. drafted, mm -hmm. see where we need to round it out, mm -hmm. okay. and then we can use that as a starting point for a work session. Right. Okay. Okay. See, so you did a lot of work on that other document too, Jen. I did. I was a writing machine the last week. Okay. So we're over. So. Okay. So I need a motion to uh, go into executive session. Do you have anything else Four. on the agenda you need to finish? We need to just check up with it. Um, maybe. Well, my recommendation is that I don't think we need. Let's do you want to do a quick motion to approve the minutes from the last meeting? Yes, unless there's any. I think there are some. Quickly on this page two of the minutes, on halfway down the page, on the um, fourth. Well, it says Commissioner Hughes asked that we will continue a conversation. He noted concerns about, and what that should say is, is about uh, the chief's background comporting to the city culture or something like that. It, Sorry, I'm, I'm we're, we're, sorry. We're in the minutes on page two. Page two. But if you go down halfway down the page where it says it's a one, two, three, the third bullet in the se uh, second paragraph. It says, Commissioner Hughes asked what uh, that we continue this conversation. You following along? Uh, I'm writing. Okay. I, I, I don't want to spend time he, he noted he had concerns about the chief's uh, background comporting to the city culture is what that should say. And that's changing it from that I, ha I said there I had concerns about his previous, the chief's previous background. That, that wasn't quite what I was getting at. And then on the, with the city culture. Co correct. And then the other one is is down where it's where it says specific traits in that same page. Um, on the second to the last one, it says Commissioner Hughes wants to understand what that should say is is um, wants the chief to under wants a new chief to understand the existence of racial disparities within the um, the existence of the of racial disparity, the, the struggles with racial disparities in, in the in the uh, criminal justice system here in Vermont. That's, that's it. Um, that's all I have for changes. Here. Okay. Motion to approve the amended minutes. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 <clears throat> okay. Motion to adjourn. To executive session. No, go to executive session. Oh, yeah. for what purpose? Uh, yeah. One very brief personnel related issue, and the other item is to figure out how we're moving forward with review of citizens' complaints that hit the 2019 annual. You have a list of the complaints. I do. I, I have a list of redacted complaints, okay. but I still don't know if we got the information we needed from the city attorney's office about what we can and cannot mm. yeah. share. So that well, is, we the, is the second thing appropriate for executive session? Not the mm -hmm. how, but if we were ready to look at the actual, we ready to look right? at the complaints. We could look. Right. You're, I have, re, I have yeah. the redact yeah. redacted we complaints. Can, we can look at them in executive session without them Correct. being redacted. Your question right. is, can we take them home? Well, I have a, also have questions about all of that to some okay. degree. Because I have questions that I'm not sure where I go to for them. Okay. Uh, 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 I guess it's to the city attorney's yes. office about how yes. much we can share. Yep. Okay. It is to the city attorney's <laughs> well, I'm sorry, can we just, did you confirm next meeting and items? Do we need to do that? 
The next meeting is the 24th. Okay. And that. we're going to review the draft of, you know, we didn't get to item number seven. The number seven. Yeah, and the role of the commission. Yeah. we will likely be discussing number six again. Yep. Yeah. And the task force will be. We don't need to have that on the agenda any longer. And then no more on the directors <coughs> and the chief. And you did okay. want to review DD40. Um, that was the commissioner Cruz had suggested, and we were going to do that. Is this the thing on corruption or something? Uh, I don't know. It's personnel. I don't know. Thirty nine personnel. We can push that back. Push okay, that back. let's put that. Let's push yeah. that back Top because we're going to have April? we're going to have enough on our plate. Okay, so I just have the fair and impartial and the role of the commission. Yeah. So, I just want to discuss the point of what we're going into executive session for. I think I don't know that there's ever been an issue, Chief Morrison, about whether or not in executive session that the names have not been redacted. I mean, we've. Well, she like guidance about that. What's that? She said she'd like guidance on that. Yeah, no, so, so the city the attorney practice. would be the appropriate resource for that right. to make sure it's in, it's consistent with the contract. But there, right. but there right. are right. things to review at this. Mm -hmm. Yes, I have. Session today. I have things to yep. review. I've yeah. moved that we enter executive session for the purpose of um, personnel and disciplinary matters. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you for coming.